Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today, we're going to look at how you can create your own custom kits using the Drum Machine Designer in Logic Pro. I'm going to show you three different ways that you can do this. So we'll look at loading in your own drum samples. We can also load in samples already found and included with Logic Pro and also using third party drum plugins. So let's dive in. So I'm going to start by creating an empty software instrument track. So select that here, hit create, and then we'll go ahead and load in Drum Machine Designer. So I'll select my track here, go to my channel strip under instrument, and go down to Drum Machine Designer. And now that loaded in an empty kit to start. And just to show if you did want to start with a pre-populated drum kit, all you have to do is go up here where it says empty kit, click on that. And now you have all these preset drum kits that Logic has already created. So for example, if you want to try uh, this deep crunch kit, we'll just click on that. And that loads in all these different drum sounds. And I can preview some of those with my MIDI keyboard. Or if you press on the icons of each one, you'll get to hear what those sound like as well. Now, if you want to go back and start from scratch, then once again, we'll just click up here at the top where it says Deep Crunch. And then from Electronic Drum Kit, we just need to go down to Empty Kit. And that selects that. So if we want to start filling some of these cells with sounds that are already loaded in Logic, then all you got to do is just click on the cell that you want to load. So if we start with the kick here, and then it automatically highlights all the kicks found in our library here. And then we can just quickly audition some of these sounds. And then when you find one you like, you can move on to the next. So say we went to the snare, hit the plus button there, then it loads in all our snares and we can do the same process there. So that's how you'd go about loading sounds already found in the library. But let's say you have your own samples and you want to load your own sounds. So if we want to load our own snare, for example. So once again, just click on the instrument you want to add. So in this case, the snare. And then we'll go find the audio sample that we want to load in here. So I've got a WAV file here of a snare. And I'm just going to drag and drop that right onto that cell. And now I have that sample loaded into my drum kit. Now you can also do this using Apple Loops found in Logic. So if we open up our loop browser here, with the little loop icon, and let's say we like this loop here. Or rather we like the snare sound from that loop. So what I can do is just once again, click and drag that right onto the cell, that analyzes all of this. But at first you'll notice the whole loop is in there. So if I trigger this, it plays my whole loop. If I just want to isolate the snare, I'm going to first switch this over to one shot. And then I can just move this over here just to isolate that snare shot. And now I might want to zoom in a little bit more, so I'll just click right here, and I'll just bring that right to there. And now we have the snare from that sample loaded in. We can also create a little bit of a fade at the end here just to make it a nice and clean exit. 
And the last thing I'll show you is how to load in drum sounds from a third-party drum plugin. So I'm going to close my loop here. And the first thing I'm going to do is just unpack my empty kit here. So you see on this track, there's this little arrow. And if I click on the arrow, that's going to unpack all the tracks I have in my kit. So right now, we just have a kick drum and our snare here. And we can actually rename this just by double clicking and call that snare. And so let's say we want to add a second snare from a different plugin. All we would do is go to our second snare track and hit the plus button right here. And once again, we can rename this snare two, for example. And now what we're going to do is select this snare track here. And you'll notice when I do that, my channel strip changed. And here you can see instrument is blank. And if we close this and pull up our mixer by hitting the hotkey X, here you'll see our kick is using the quick sampler. The snare is using the quick sampler. And our second snare that we just added is currently blank. So there's nothing loaded on there. So that's how you'd load a third party plugin. So, for example, we will click up here on your instruments. And let's say I want to use the snare from this Stephen Slate drum sampler. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to load in a kit. And then now I have access to all of these drums. And I want to select this snare. So let's go back and open up our drum machine designer. So I'm going to click at the very top again, empty kit. Open that up here. I'm going to close the library for now, just to make a little bit more room. And now you can see that that is loaded to the snare here. Now, one thing to be aware of is the input note and output note right here. So right now, the input note is E1. So that means if I press E1 on my keyboard, it's going to trigger and correspond to whatever E1 is in this plugin, because both the input and output are set to E1. Now, if I change the output here, it says E1 let's say, to C1. Now, the same note is actually going to trigger the kick. Because in this plugin, C1 corresponds to the kick. So although I'm hitting E1 on my keyboard, it's triggering C1 in the plugin. So that's helpful if you're triggering a note on your keyboard, but it's not triggering the right instrument in the third party plugin that you're trying to do, then you want to look at changing this note. And most drum plugins follow a certain order. So generally, your C1 is on your kick, D1 is your snare, and sometimes E1 would be your secondary snare, which is the case here. And then F sharp is usually your hi hat. And so is G sharp and A sharp. And then usually you'll have your toms on G, A, B. And then cymbals and auxiliary percussion from that and above. So I'm going to stick with uh, D1 here as my secondary snare. So now I've got three different instruments loaded in from three different places. Our kick was a built in logic sample found in our library, the snare. We first loaded in our own sample, and then we loaded in a sample from Apple Loops. And our second snare comes directly from this SSD5 plugin. So I hope this gives you some ideas on how you can start creating your own drum kits using samples from different places. And remember that you can also start with a pre-populated kit in Logic Pro 
and then just swap out a few pieces that you want to kind of make it your own. If you have any questions about Drum Machine Designer, make sure to leave those in the comments below. And if you want to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Ultimate Logic Pro Starter Pack. This includes my Logic Pro Hotkey Cheat Sheet, as well as my audio recording checklist, my mixing guide, my gear guide, and my Logic Pro session templates. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.